What's up guys, my name is Nick and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at one of the more popular option trading strategies, the strangle. Before we get into the video though, do me a huge favour, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a ton. Okay guys, I'll see you on the other side. Cheers. There are essentially two types of strangles, long and short. Long strangles are typically set up by buying an out of the money call and an out of the money put. Short strangles are the reverse, that is we sell or write each option. The call and the put option should be based on the same underlying, Apple stock for example. Additionally, the expiration date of each option should be the same. The strikes of each option are selected so that initially both the call and the put are out of the money. That is, the put is below the current stock price and the call is above it. Since a long strangle requires the purchase of the options, the position is established for a debit. When opening a short strangle position on the other hand, we receive money, or what is known as a credit. Let's take a closer look at each strategy. A long strangle is indifferent to the direction in which the price of the stock actually moves. It can be either higher or lower, it doesn't matter, but in order for the strategy to be profitable, the stock must move a long way from the current stock price, which initially is assumed to be right in between the long put and call strike. Long strangles share many of the characteristics of long straddles, which I've broken down in another video. While a long strangle will cost less money than a straddle to implement as the options are out of the money, a long strangle does require a larger move in the stock price in order to make money. In fact, the wider the gap between the put and call strikes, the further the price needs to move. This is why long strangles have a lower probability of profit than long straddles. The opposite is true for a short strangle. A short strangle is a price neutral strategy that benefits when the range in which a stock trades is contained between the short call and put option strikes. The diagrams show the payoff for both the long and short strangle positions. On the x-axis we can see the stock's price as we go from left to right so the price of the stock increases. On the y-axis we can see profit and loss. Profits increase as we move up the y-axis from position losses below the horizontal x-axis to profits above. The blue lines in each case show the payoff at expiration. The orange lines show the expected payoff early on during the course of the trade. Let's take a look at a concrete example though and break down the actual numbers. So, recall a long strangle is the purchase of an out of the money call and an out of the money put. Apple stock is trading at $110 per share. We can purchase the 120 call for $225 and the 100 put for $2.10. The net debit for the 10120 strangle then, or the amount of money we need to pay for the strangle, is $4.35 or $435 per contract. Our maximum profit is unlimited, since in theory there's no upper limit to how high the stock price can go before the options expire. The loss is limited to the initial amount that we pay for the strangle, or $435. For a long strangle to make money, we need the stock to move outside of either the long call or put option strikes. But how far? We can calculate the break-even price by adding or subtracting this debit from the option strike prices. The lower break-even point, or BEP1, is equal to the strike price of the put, $100, less the net debit of $435. The break-even then is $95.65. To the upside, the break-even or BEP2 is equal to the strike price of the call, which is $120, plus the net debit of $435. The break-even then is $124.35. So, the long straddle is profitable when the stock price trades either below $95.65 or above $124.35 by the option expiration date. If the price remains inside this range, the long straddle is going to lose money. So, recall, a short strangle is a sell of an out-of-the-money call and an out-of-the-money put. Again, with Apple stock trading at $110 a share, we can sell the 120 call for $2.25 and the 100 put for $2.10. The net credit for the 100 120 strangle then, or the amount of money we receive for selling the strangle, is $4.35 or $435 per contract. Our maximum loss is unlimited, since in theory there's no upper limit to how high the stock price can go before the options expire. The profit is limited to the initial amount that we receive for selling the strangle, in this case $435. Remember, for a short strangle to make money, we need the stock to stay inside of the long call and put option strikes. But where are our break-even prices beyond which we start to lose money? We can calculate these 
by adding or subtracting the credit from the option strike prices. The lower break-even point, or BP1, is equal to the strike price of the put, $100, less the net credit of $435. The downside break-even then is $95.65. To the upside, the break-even, or BP2, is equal to the strike price of the call, which is $120, plus the net credit of $435. The upside break-even then is $124.35. So, the short stand is profitable when the stock price trades between $95.65 and $124.35 by the option expiration date. If the price moves outside this range, the short strangle loses money. So, let's summarize a trader's view based on the selection of either a long or short strangle position. A long strategy is price indifferent, but very large moves are required in order for the strategy to be profitable. The stock price needs to be very volatile. Since the range that the stock needs to move outside of is very large, there's a lower probability of success associated with a long strangle position. This, however, is compensated for by the higher potentially unlimited rewards. A short strangle, on the other hand, is a range-bound strategy. Since the range the stock needs to stay inside of is very large, there's a higher probability of success associated with a short strangle position. There is, of course, a higher potentially unlimited loss associated with the trade. Now, let's take a quick look at the strangle Greeks. If we take a look at the following table, we can see the sign of the Greeks for each of a long or short call and a long and short put. The Greeks for the strangle are just the sum of its relevant parts. The long strangle Greeks can be found by summing the long call and the long put Greeks, and the short strangle Greeks can be found by summing the short call and short put Greeks. So, what are the important takeaways here? Well, note that initially strangles, both long and short, when constructed such that the call and put strikes are out of the money by roughly the same amount, a delta or close to delta neutral. This is because the individual call and put deltas are of similar magnitude, but of opposite sign, and so they effectively cancel each other out. However, this delta can rapidly change as the stock price moves towards either the call or the put option strike price. Note that the long strangle holder is long or has positive gamma. This means as the stock price moves down towards the put strike, for example, so he accumulates more and more negative deltas, and the size of his position becomes larger and increasingly negative. The position builds in his favour in the direction of the stock move. The reverse is true for the short strangle holder. He is effectively growing longer and longer stock as the price falls. This is the major benefit of holding a long strangle position. The long gamma means large moves in the stock help the long strangle holder. However, note that there is a catch. A long strangle holder is short or has negative theta, so the passage of time hurts his position. The strangle needs to move quickly or the effects of time decay can negatively impact the long strangle profit and offset the gains as a result of any changes in the underlying stock price. Wild moves in the market and an increase in volatility help the long strangle since the position is long or has positive vega. The reverse, of course, is true for the short strangle holder. In summary then, long strangles should ideally be placed when implied volatility is low. This means that option premiums are lower and so the break-even points are closer to the initial stock price when the trade is implemented. Rising volatility during the course of trade will benefit the long strangle holder. When volatility is high on the other hand, option premiums are expensive and so the range over which a short strangle holder will be profitable is much wider. Falling volatility during the course of the trade will help the short strangle holder. A long strangle has defined risk and the maximum loss is equal to the premium paid. The profit potential is unlimited. The opposite is true for the short strangle holder. This undefined risk and potentially unlimited losses mean that short strangles can be capital intensive. A long strangle requires a very large move in price away from the initial stock price at the time the trade is implemented in order to be profitable. A short strangle position only needs price to remain within a fairly large range for the strategy to succeed. There is a risk-reward trade-off. Long strangles have a lower chance or probability of being profitable, but they also have a much higher potentially unlimited return. Guys, if you made it this far, you made it to the end and your support's very much appreciated. Again, if you enjoy the content, do me a favour, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Cheers.